Hello, my dear friends of the Cold Cathedral and beyond. We pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. So a little different angle. We're going the other way, which is wonderful. It's beautiful. The canopy of candles, which is such a remarkable way that people discover to remember a loved one or celebrate an anniversary or to make an offering and then to have the candle lit for a week. And uh, we always put that in the bulletin if it's okay with you. So it's a kind of this canopy over the baptismal font gives us that focus that we so long for and need. So today, um, when I think about, it's not July, <laughs> it's not September, it's Lent. So that Lent has a very particular uh, way of calling us into conversion, calling us to transformation. So Lent is Lent, uh, and there's all kinds of signs that we experience this season and that we're open to some change and some steps of renewal and uh, some steps of kind of acknowledging uh, I need the mercy of Jesus and I also have a desire. And this desire is about the passion and love of Christ. So uh, when we really have this desire, the passion of Christ, we want to cling to Christ. And that's why the season of Lent has this particular grace and gift, because it gives us this depth of awareness uh, that I want to cling to Christ. We cling to all kinds of other things. And part of that uh, challenge in walking to Jerusalem is to really say, what do I cling to? You know, it can be possessions, it can be a relationship, and which I am possessive. You know, it can be power and money. And, you know, I think one of the things I cling to is time. You know, I try to be open and generous with my time, but I'm like, oh, you know, I gotta have, I gotta carve out some time here. And I have plenty of time, but it's more of a kind of a little mentality um, about kind of being possessive about my time. Because Lent is an instrument, I was thinking today. You know, it's so uh, fascinating. It's an instrument for fostering conversion, for fostering uh, that walk. And there are so many different practices. You know, we have those ones that we're steeped in, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Um, but then all the other practices. I was thinking today at 1210. Mass, we have a lot more people, we always do. And it's so inspiring. Um, such a big group of folks who make this a discipline to come for 1210 Mass and uh, to really cling with love and passion to Christ and to the Eucharist and to the Word of God and to say, you know, this is uh, significant for me. I got an email. We have the Stations of the Cross at 5.15 on Fridays. You know, we live stream them, and, but this person was here uh, in person. And they were saying, you know, I just love the Stations. Just kind of writing a little thank you email and uh, saying, I, I never participate in the Stations or, you know, I see them on the walls in the church, but only during Lent. And there's something that happens to me. This is, this is what I mean about that Lent is so peculiar uh, in, in enabling us to walk, to cling to Christ, to be embraced with mercy, to kind of discover what I need to take a step forward. And so it's, uh, in a certain way, it's, there's a lot kind of built in, if you will, uh, because the climate of everything, it, it just changes. It's also, Lent is obedience. No, I want to listen. You might recall, it comes from the Latin word obediri. It's kind of fascinating. Obedience means to listen. So I come with a listening heart uh, to make myself open for potential uh, transformation. 
that I don't need to calculate, I don't need to measure, I don't need to, but I'm just making Lent, Lent. This gift of prayer that we talk about, and it's always one of those beautiful calls in, in Lent, is about listening. It's about waiting. I'm waiting for Christ. And uh, it happens by acknowledging it's time. You know, I said, uh, I think last week where Thomas Merton, somebody asked him, you know, teach me how to pray. And Merton said, start with time. So it is really time that I need. You know, it's not mechanical, it can be, but that's not how we define it. It's not immediate, because prayer is waiting. Prayer is being obedient. You know, it's not magic, it's not instinctive. I need to do the discipline to say, I want to focus this little bit of time and really pray and say that it's, it's time. I'm waiting for you, Jesus. I'm waiting for the Spirit to move me, to speak to me, to call me forth, and for me to be filled with some joy because I experience the presence of the one I love. One of our little struggles, of course, is we're so filled with autonomy. Um, you know, we can be so attached and have so many attachments uh, because we have kind of, <laughs> uh, we're attached to ourselves in some ways, right? That I kind of, this attachment to my autonomy, to my independence, to my lack of acknowledging surrender and the need for abandonment, which is part of that waiting and a part of that obedience uh, that I'm speaking about. We're self-absorbed. It's another one. And so it's not to be negative and just name all kinds of problematic issues. It is to begin to acknowledge that I am self-absorbed. And um, part of the fasting that we do is to say, you know, I really need to be free of all that weighs me down. So that's an honest question. You know, what weighs me down? And fasting, I want to be free from what weighs me down so that that prayer and fasting leads me to works of love, leads me to care for the poor. Because as soon as I'm not so weighed down, I'm ready to reach out to the poor. I'm ready to reach out to other uh, brothers and sisters in a way of helping, in a way of serving. Um, even COVID you know, makes that a little difficult, but there's all kinds of ways that we can can reach out. I'm thinking, uh, you know, I'm, I'm standing in front of Brian and I was thinking today, during this COVID, during the pandemic, it must be delightful to have little ones around. Now, I know it's a lot of work and I know it's not always delightful, but I can't imagine the beauty and gift and grace of tiny ones really entertaining you and <laughs> having all kinds of unique ways of helping you to be filled with hope and possibility. And that's what I wanna uh, conclude with. A little description from uh, Charles Piggy. Charles Piggy is a French poet. He died in 1911 in the First World War. I think the first day of the war actually. And so he writes this beautiful poetry and he's writing about a little girl. And uh, this little girl, her focus is what will be so what will be in the sense of waiting for God? What will be in the sense of listening to God and uh, not being mechanical? So here's from, it's from The Portal, which is written by Piggy. Piggy describes the virtue of hope as this little girl hope. And yet it's the little girl who will endure worlds. The little girl, nothing at all. She alone carrying the others who will cross worlds past. Hope is the tiny child that walks between her older sisters, faith and charity. So the tiny child, hope, who walks between faith and charity. This is a, the little poem is gonna focus on that. She appears small, 
but is powerful enough to propel the other virtues forward. She is the driving force behind them. In this little poem, it's she, the little one, who carries them all. Because faith, she's only what is. But she, she sees what will be. Charity loves only what is. But she, she loves what will be. This little girl, Hope, who walks alongside her sisters in an active virtue, a virtue in motion on the road of Christian faith. So that we can have this Lent, what will be? I have hope. I am waiting. I'm obedient. I'm listening. And I'm paying attention with my whole being to discover what will be. The Mass today we had in the Gospel, the Our Father. And Jesus introduces that, as you recall, by saying, don't babble like the pagans do. Don't be chattering, but just come in the simple way to say, Daddy, because Jesus is referring Abba, which is Daddy, an intimate expression of the Father. And we bring all those needs of our hearts, the people we want to remember, you pray together with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let it be waiting, listening, being obedient. It just is time.